Hi, this is Jeremy Bryden with Chorus Squared Software Solutions. Today I'll be introducing a small game client that I wrote in the past couple of days to kind of experiment and teach me about a couple of technologies that I found interesting. Uh, the first being a physics simulation in a 2D game, and the second being how to use uh, third-party tools and import uh, our assets such as textures and then also geometry. So what you see in front of you is a C, C++ OpenGL application. Um, you can see the three-dimensional world right in front of you. Uh, even though it looks 2D, it is actually in 3D, and I'll explain why it's saved in 3D. Uh, we could go ahead and zoom out, zoom in, the regular things. The green lines you see represent the collision model, which is uh, the model used when doing the physics simulation. And then all the other parts of the world are just simply scenery files. Um, so that tree in the background is purely a scene, uh, scenery to kind of make the thing, the world look a little bit better. Uh, the white lines also represent light data. So currently I'm not actually rendering any of the lights, but it's just nice to know that I am importing it correctly. Uh, so I mentioned that the other aspect that I really wanted to learn about was how to do 2D physics simulations. And specifically, I wanted to figure out how to do these uh, ragdoll animations. And uh, I got the idea from Soldat, which is a two-dimensional side-scroller game. And in that game, they have some really cool animations associated with characters moving around. And at first, I started investigating and I learned about something called Verlet integration, which is a uh, kind of a neat technology, a neat approach to uh, Newton's laws when it comes to physics simulations. Uh, but the problem is, is that I couldn't get the performance that I wanted. As much as I tried and as much as I started researching into some really low level, you know, how do you optimize square roots? How do you optimize um, certain really basic math operations? And it turns out it was just too complicated for a small project that I wanted to do. So instead I turned to a third party implementation called Box2D which is, as the name implies, just a two-dimensional physics simulation uh, library, and it actually works extremely well. I was really impressed by the performance. Uh, so I took that code, I merged it with the existing code that I wrote, uh, I added a few new features myself uh, from the original simulation, and you can see here the result, which is uh, these ragdolls, which are human-like bipeds, meaning they have two arms, two legs, and uh, a chest, torso, head, you can see them interacting with a two-dimensional physical world. So they'll hit the green triangles, but they'll ignore all of the scenery files. Um, you can see the two legs kind of spread around as it's falling down. Uh, I turned down the simulation speed so that way the viewer can see uh, more detail. Also, if we go into um, wireframe shading, you can actually see the bodies. They really do kind of look human. Uh, so it's just, again, impressive that Box2D was able to do this. Um, some other interesting aspects is Box2D allows us to create upper and lower bounds in terms of these joints. So I went ahead and added uh, upper and lower bounds for uh, each of these models so that when you create them and they flop around, uh, they flop around human-like. Uh, you don't have arms that bend 180 degrees backwards. You don't have legs that go straight up into the face. So it's kind of a neat little feature. Uh, again, if you're interested in learning about how to implement this yourself, I would strongly encourage the viewer to go and Google search Verlay integration. If you want to learn how to do this for a project, so if you actually want to implement this uh, for a game, I would suggest look into Box2D. Now, the other aspect that I mentioned in the beginning was how do I import um, model data and scene data from a third-party editor, just like any professional game company would do. So what I did is I downloaded Blender, I learned how to use a little bit, and I got comfortable to the point where uh, I was able to create my 3D world. And to import it into my game, all I had to do was manipulate the world in any way I wanted until I got it. So as an example, I'll take these, um, just take a couple of points, change them around as a proof of concept. So let's move these guys up. I could also duplicate anything I want. So let's take these trees and duplicate them over here. Let's take this little tower, duplicate it up here. So the world is slightly changed. To actually export it, all we have to do is just run a Python script that I had to write. Um, Blender is very powerful in the sense of the tools it gives you in terms of extending its feature set uh, is huge, uh, hugely powerful. So here I was able to write a very simple Python script. It exports it into um, a file format that's very similar to wavefront.obj, I believe. And in essence, it's just an ASCII file with vertices, face data, uh, UV data, normalization data, light data, 
and then also entity data. Um, if we alt tab back to Xcode and we execute the project, it'll automatically load the changes. Let me full screen this. You can see that there's now an extra tree as well as there's an extra tower duplicated here. And also you can see that some of these polygon positions have moved. Uh, if you take off the collision model, you'll see that the world doesn't have lighting yet enabled, uh, but just I really want to emphasize that the data is being loaded. Uh, you could scroll over the map, you could still see that these uh, biped animations are still going on. Uh, right now the performance is such that with the combination of my rendering management um, using Magi 3, and then also uh, the performance of Box2D, I could easily get up to maybe 30 of these bipeds uh, before losing uh, significant frame rates. Um, so it goes to show that uh, sometimes implementing uh, features that you want yourself by hand isn't always the best solution, especially when it comes to big things such as model and scene editing. Uh, there's no way I would have been able to get uh, such a complex world using my own tools. Um, so it's nice that I've been able to spend my time focused on the game client rather than trying to write 20 different other tools to load and import and modify data. The very final thing I will say is uh, while researching, I ran into small visual bugs. So one of the biggest is, is that it's very difficult to get these uh, models to look just right in the terms of um, once they settle down, it's very difficult to get them to look... Um, as if they're completely colliding with the world. Right now they're hovering slightly. You can see there's a big open space between these bodies and the bodies over here and the ground. Um, I'm working on figuring out a way so that the, the, bottles, the bodies settle a little bit better and are a little bit more visually appealing. Um, after that, I'm just gonna try and figure out how to do lights, maybe do real-time shadowing. Uh, these are all things that I've never done before, but I'm very interested in trying to figure out how to learn. Again, if you're interested in doing something very similar to this, uh, just Google search Box2D. If you are interested in figuring out how the physics aspect works without caring about implementation, go ahead and Google search um, Verly integration. So best of luck. This is Jeremy Bryden. I'm out.